What's up guys, Jeff here, and today uh, we're gonna do a little story time video for you. Uh, what I talked about in last week's video, obviously I'm opening up a fish store. Some of you had asked about how I've gotten to this point, and I wanted to share that uh, with you guys today. Now this isn't gonna be something that I do a huge video series on, because a lot of the stuff in this video is kind of outside the scope of my channel, and I wanna keep it applicable, so. Uh, today we are going to fill the needs of some of those folks that asked for how did I get to this point and it was a lot of work so let's get into it. All right folks so here is the shop when I first got a look at it this is actually uh, before we kind of worked through the details of things and actually had keys in hand uh, and I was just taking some photos to make sure that you know this was going to be the right place for me but as you can see white ceiling tiles some of the lights uh, as far as the shop lights go were not working it was slat board everywhere. There's these weird racking attachments. You got tile on the floor, which is something that I was excited about. And then you have this weird mid room uh, in the shop, which eventually I decided that this is going to be a very awesome spot for classes in the future. Something that I want to do here at the shop is do a lot for education, especially uh, for the local customers, because I want everybody to be able to maintain a successful saltwater tank or even freshwater tank. We'll do classes for both sides of the hobby. Now the reason for the big mirrors is actually at one point this was a wedding dress store so they have you know some uh, changing rooms in the back there as well as big mirrors so the brides could come out and take a look at their dress uh, which I'm not going to be removing the mirrors uh, even though I don't want to look at my face all the time. Uh, they are like the most crazy epoxy bond ever and actually tried removing one of the mirrors in the dressing room and it completely shattered so they're staying where they are currently. Now here is some photos of the back room. Uh, the back room is typically going to be used for storage uh, for items and uh, not much going on here. Uh, I'm hopefully going to get some better racking in here. I got my bathroom, electrical panel, again back room, not much to see. Now, once I got the keys in hand, you know, the lease was signed, everything was good to go. I wanted to kind of think through my floor plan. So I got some tape, painter's tape, and then just started kind of going around the shop, figuring out where I wanted frag tanks, where I wanted uh, display tanks to be, dry goods, all that stuff. Uh, but, you know, what you first think of and what you end up doing, not always the same thing. And definitely have changed my floor plan at least twice since these photos. But I think I have something concrete now. But once I was in the area and I kind of was thinking through everything, I started looking at the slab board, which was one of the things that actually attracted me to this location and realized that it is pretty chewed up. It has to be some type of reclaimed slab board. So I eventually came to the conclusion that I just needed to get rid of as much of it as possible. I did keep some of it, but not all of it. So I started removing the slab board and then, you know, obviously ripping stuff out of the walls needed to start going through and start mudding everything. And I'll tell you guys right now, I am absolutely horrible at mudding. I'm good at concrete finishing, which is weird, but do not have the hands for mudding. So the whole process ended up taking a lot longer than it really should have, but eventually got to a place where I felt it was okay, threw some primer up and started working on the ceiling tiles. Now, this is kind of me coming to the conclusion that I was going to work with what I had because Ultimately, I didn't want to spend a tremendous amount of money on a couple of different ideas that I had prior to resorting to just taking the tiles that I had and painting them. Originally, what I wanted to do was replace all the tiles with a vinyl tile, uh, but that was going to cost me anywhere from fifteen to $2,000 to do that, uh, which that was my second option, the vinyl tiles. And I decided to get some paint, start painting them, and see how they looked. And eventually came to the point where I could live with it now as far as some tiles i couldn't take them down i actually had to paint them up in the grid uh, because of the sprinkler that they use i couldn't remove that cap uh, which would make me able to remove the ceiling tile uh, without actually replacing the entire sprinkler head uh, so i had to paint those ones in place so as you can see here the tile floor is completely jacked up i've gone through and started painting the grid which was a little bit easier than i anticipated uh, but i had a lot of the tiles put in the back they were stacked up which ended up actually causing me to go back and repaint them once I put them back in place but eventually had the ceiling to a place where I knew that I was going to be okay with it and I was ready to move on to the next step. 
So I got my walls done. I got my ceiling done. It's time to start working on the floor. And the vinyl tile that they had laid down was incredibly cheap. Uh, and it was pretty easy to remove. Now, you're going to see some glue as we kind of go through these photos. That is actually carpet glue. The vinyl tile was thrown on top of the carpet glue just sitting there. But in the very front of the store, there was these old tiles, which had been glued down to like a degree that they were incredibly hard to remove. I would have actually kept them if the store was entirely those black and white tiles. Uh, but obviously there was this weird ridge where they went from that tile to carpet with the previous uh, occupant. And now I was just going to get rid of this stuff. What I ended up needing to do to get rid of it was actually take two irons, lay them down on the tile, and then be able to actually scrape up the tiles. And slowly but surely was able to remove all of that tile out of the front. But probably most definitely took some years off my life doing it. So at this point, I don't really know exactly what I want to do with the floor, but I knew that I needed to get rid of the glue. So I rented a buffer from Home Depot and was able to get most of the carpet glue off and also the glue in the front of the store, which was a different glue holding them tiles down. But once all that glue was gone, went through with a deck brush and a mop bucket and a vacuum and just completely uh, went through and scrubbed the floor three times. And I was actually pretty happy with the way that the concrete looked. I know it looks kind of rough in these photos, but when you see it in person, it actually looks pretty decent. Uh, so at this point, went back to the walls, threw up the paint that I wanted to paint the walls. This is actually my second choice. Originally, I was going with a blue, decided to go with a gray. Uh, but at this point, I had the walls painted, and then I called in the electrician so I could start removing the track lighting. I wanted to remove the track lighting from day one, and once I started painting the ceiling tiles, knew that I needed to get that track lighting out of there uh, prior to putting those tiles back because there was going to be some spots that I needed to go back through and touch up. While the electrician was there, threw in some extra outlets and also went through on every single outlet we put a ground fault indicator outlet which originally I was thinking maybe doing breakers, but once I got in there, I was thinking, you know, there could be something wrong with a tank and then I lose an entire circuit or in a group of tanks and not be able to identify which tanks needed to be addressed. Uh, so we decided to go with the outlet. The electrician at you know one point was suggesting going with the breakers, but kind of talked him through it and then eventually realized that there was just so many circuits that these outlets were on that we needed to actually go to the ground fault indicators, which is an incredibly important thing, especially for an aquarium store to have. It was a little bit more expensive, but ultimately in the end, it's going to be the better option. So once the electrician went through, I took out all the track lighting and was able to put the ceiling tiles back. I think I had put one coat back on the ceiling tiles once they were in place and was letting it dry. And then I started moving on to the freshwater aquarium stand and I'm going to be doing an entire video on the stand, which uh, as soon as I have it completed, I'll share that with you guys. But uh, there's some things I absolutely love about it. There's some things I absolutely hate about it and probably will never do it again. But once I had the aquarium stand uh, framed out and put into place, got the tiles back in, gave them their final coat and went through and did some touch up on the walls and kind of at this process of going back and forth between the black paint and the gray paint. And eventually you stop messing up to the point where you actually can just leave it be. And here in this photo, you can see that there's a couple lights out. I had to go through and replace those ballasts. Uh, there were some OG ballasts in there and they definitely needed to be updated. But this is where I'm at currently. Uh, they got the lights where I want them. They're fixed up, you know. And if you kind of go back and look at to where I started off at to where I am now, it's been a long road. And there's definitely a long road to go. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with the progress that I've made over the last couple of months. So here is a photo of where we started, and this is where we are at currently. So I got uh, some orders that I'm waiting on right now. I got some retail racking coming in. I also have uh, a couple of fish holding systems coming in. I'm also hoping to get in the water table this week, but definitely everything coming together. I'm at a point now where I'm incredibly happy uh, with the way the shop looks. It's not exactly what I envisioned, but it's pretty close. You know, you got to make compromises as you go through this stuff. And definitely a lot of lessons learned uh, that has brought me to this point. All right, guys. So there you have it. There is my work that I've done to get the store to this point. Now, I'm hoping that this week kind of brings 
uh, some deliveries in here so we can kind of take that next step, get things going a little bit further. Now, if you guys want another video like this, let me know. Um, I probably would only do it from this point right now to completion. I don't want to kind of just jam up the channel with a bunch of like how to's and story times and construction type stuff. So I uh, want to thank you guys for watching. If you're still watching, you're definitely a uh, part of the crew here and I appreciate your time and I'll see you next time right here with a brand new video.